Hi everyone, welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. On the show today, we're gonna make a homemade French vanilla ice cream using the iCock ice cream maker. Now we did an unboxing of this and I am ready to put this baby to the test. And we are gonna do so with some absolutely fantastic ice cream. So, welcome to my kitchen and let's make some homemade French vanilla ice cream. We're using the Icock ice cream maker and this ice cream maker is great because it has an inner bowl that we put in the freezer and it is nice and chilled so we're going to put it in here and it is going to freeze our ice cream. So gone are the days that we need a bunch of salt, we need a bunch of ice. This thing is going to do it all for us. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Icock for sending me this ice cream maker. We're going to have a lot of fun making some ice cream. So let's get to it. The very first thing is we are going to make a custard. And to do that, in our saucepan, we're going to take three cups of whole milk. So this isn't uh, non-fat, it isn't low fat. This is whole milk. If you want to make real homemade ice cream, you got to use real ingredients, right? So we are doing three cups of whole milk. And then to make it even better, we have two cups of heavy cream. It's not low calorie ice cream, but it's good. We also have a half a cup of sugar, and we have this over medium heat. We have a quarter teaspoon of salt, kosher salt, and I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So what we're making is a French vanilla ice cream. And the difference between this and just a regular ice cream is we are doing a base of a custard. A lot of people think the difference is some type of different vanilla that you're using. And it's actually not. It's actually that the base of a French vanilla is a custard. That means that you get that yellow look to it because our custard is going to have a lot of egg yolk. So you can use vanilla bean. Um, you would scrape the skeeds off. The issue is with the custard, we're going to strain it after we're done making the custard. So if you put vanilla bean in now, you're just going to get strain out all those seeds. So if you're going to put vanilla bean in it, make sure you do it after you strain it. We're just going to use extract because unfortunately our local store, when I went there, vanilla beans are like $6 a piece. So I'm choosing vanilla extract. It will be delicious. So we're going to um, whisk this. We're just going to continually whisk it until it heats up. When we get our heat on here and it's below the boiling point, not bubbling, but it's really hot like that, we're going to temper our egg yolks. And I have five egg yolks here. And the reason we temper them is if you go and dump these straight into the hot liquid, basically we're going to have scrambled eggs in there. So we're going to take a little bit of the hot liquid, we're going to put it into the egg yolks and whisk it to warm them up. Then we're going to put them into the custard to prevent them from scrambling. So let me heat this up and then we'll temper our egg yolks. So this is heated up to about 160 degrees or so and now we're going to temper our eggs. So we're going to take our cup here and I'm going to take about a half a cup of this to start and we're going to stir the egg yolks. I have five egg yolks and we're just going to put sort of drizzle in our hot liquid. I'm doing this with my left hand and I'm right handed. <laughs> Put in just a little bit more. So now we're going to put our eggs into our liquid here and we are just going to whisk continuously 
for about eight minutes or so. We want this to thicken, and but we don't want to boil it. So we want to keep it just under a boil, and we just want it to continue to whip. We want to keep stirring it. We don't want it to burn. So we'll just continue to stir for about eight minutes, and then we will be ready to cool it. Okay, so let's strain this baby. Woo, woo, and be careful. This pot is hungry. And see all this in here? That could be partially cooked egg. It could be just part of the cream, but look at how nice and smooth that is. So the custard is done and we're gonna let this come down in temperature. We don't wanna throw it in the refrigerator when it's super hot because it'll heat up everything else in the refrigerator. We wanna take this till it's completely cool. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for about eight hours. You probably wanna do this one day and then the next day make your ice cream. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna take some uh, saran wrap or plastic wrap and I want to put a layer over this custard so it doesn't develop a skin on it. I'm not 100% sure if this is totally necessary, but for some reason, um, Eric wants to do it like this, so we've always done it like this. But if you do have luck without doing that, then just let me know in the comments. Okay, so I've got plastic wrap on the surface of the custard. We're gonna finish letting this cool down. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator, and when it's nice and cool, we'll be back to make the ice cream. All right, now Amy made the custard, and it, it's wonderful, I can tell you that. But since I'm the one who's gonna be eating the ice cream, uh, it's only natural that I show you how to make the ice cream, right? Since Amy can't participate in that part until we come up with a non-dairy version. So the first thing we've done and I need to warn you about is a couple of things. One is the custard has been in the refrigerator for several hours. We've done lots of stuff, fix breaks, all kinds of good stuff, clean the house. It takes its time, but it's critical. It has to be cooled. Second of all, this guy here, this is the freezer part. You can shake it, you don't hear anything. That means it's frozen. If you hear it shaking around, it means it's not frozen, you're not in good shape. We've already washed all the parts for that cock, so now it's time to put it to use. So you just push these little buttons in. I don't know, do it the right way maybe. There you go. And we're gonna, I don't know, get this part second. Let's go ahead and get the frozen guy in there. He's in there. The paddle consists of two parts. It consists of the main paddle part and it consists of this little guy that connects to the actual ice cream maker. So we're gonna go ahead and put him on there like that. And then we're going to put the other part in like, uh, should go like that, there you go. He's in there now. All right, so once you got the paddle on here with the little attachment, it's time to go to work. So make sure that the opening part here is facing where it says eye cock on that particular side. And this thing here, I'd love it just push down and it clicks in place, but I haven't really seen that. So what I do is on one side, I'll push down and I'll push down the other side and it's clicked. The top parts of these tabs release it so you can lift it up. You don't need to push them to push it down. So click it on one side and just push on the other and it seems to work. Now the biggest thing here is we need to get this guy spinning while we add our custard. If you do what I did on a test run, pour it all in there because it's convenient, there's not enough clearance, it starts freezing immediately and it's a mess and it just won't work right. So let's get this going. It's gonna take 30 to 40 minutes depending upon what you're using for this recipe. It seems to do it 
within the 30 minutes. If it starts binding up and eventually could shut down on over torque, that means it's done freezing. Um, we had it where it was binding a little bit and it was good enough. It was already stirred up enough and then we just finished freezing it in the freezer. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this guy going for the 30 minutes. I'm gonna lift this little guy up here and we're gonna start pouring this in. Now it's critical and we have the little chute that's right here. Do not overfill this. We're going to fill this up roughly halfway full. Try to not make a mess here. I'm gonna go through about half this recipe because what it does is it swells, if that makes sense. You know, when liquids um, freeze, they expand. Same thing with ice cream. I'm not a professional ice cream maker. This just makes me seem like one. And we can go a little bit more in here. Uh, note to self, put this in a large uh, Pyrex, maybe measuring cup or something like a quart size if you have one. So that way you can pour it and it'll go in great. This bowl has no lip, makes a mess. I guess I'll just have to give it some personal cleaning, won't I? So this puppy is going to be spinning for probably the next 30-ish minutes until it either goes ding or I determine, you know, it needs more freezing. And then in a second batch, we'll finish the remainder up. And if you've got some little ones running around the house demanding food immediately, it will come out with about a soft serve consistency. So that's good enough if you're just going to, you know, you know, garble and just be a pig and eat it right away. But if you need to make snow, uh, snow cones, you need to make ice cream cones out of it, you might want to um, take it out of the, of the thing. Well, you can leave it in there, but I mean, I need to make another batch, so I'm gonna take it out. But whatever bowl you do put it in, put it back in the freezer for maybe an hour or so, and it'll harden up a little bit. Um, I didn't have any problem at all with this recipe getting too hard where, you know, a spoon just, you gotta chisel it. No, it was um, just as ice cream friendly as it could be. Um, I think I was nice on the first try, and I don't think I even ate half of it. I think I only ate like a quarter of it. But then somebody had to put out its misery. So let's let this puppy churn, and we'll be back shortly. So as you can see, I've only been running this for maybe 12 minutes, and it's already doubled in size. So it's already doing its little freezing action and, you know, coming up a little bit. So it's looking pretty tasty right now. We still got a little bit of headroom, so we're not going to make a mess here. But that was what I really wanted to warn you about earlier was definitely don't fill this to the brim or you're going to be in trouble here. So I filled mine about a third to halfway and I'm going to be good on this. It's looking good. So it looks like when the ice cream gets to a certain consistency, um, it'll change directions on you. And I thought I read an owner's manual that it may actually shut down altogether. Like there's like a torque setting in there. And if that happens, it's not broken. It's just basically saying, I'm done. So I think this is done enough for my needs. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Do that. I'm going to go ahead and push these buttons in. Doink. Put that up. Big old honky mess in there. I guess somebody will have to clean it up, won't we? Right? Me? We're going to go ahead and uh, put this in the freezer. All right, just did a quick rinse job in here using cold water. Just want to do a quick little test. Shaking this, I don't really hear anything slushing. So that means this guy's still frozen enough. We can do a second batch in here and so without further ado let's go ahead and get the i don't know get that on there this time i'm using a measuring cup that actually has a bore spout so yay for me let's go ahead and get this guy cranked up and i must have left just a little bit of ice cream in there so my goal was to get this going in a hurry i didn't want to hit it with too much water rinse it out because I don't want to thaw out the um, 
the bowl itself, but I needed to get enough of my mess out of there. So, um, like I said, this thing has zero tolerance, so I would not be able to get the lid on if there was any frozen uh, stuff at the bottom, which there was. So, I know. Yep, still good. So we're gonna go ahead and let this guy churn until he's done. Um, this guy might actually go the full 30 minutes if this bowl uh, starts to warm up or anything. And then after that, we'll take it out and have a taste. All right, the uh, dinger went off and so it's time to uh, take out this great masterpiece, right? So let's pop that out. And you can see this time, it's a little more user friendly. So, I don't know, let's take him off. Get that all out of the way there. It's gonna put him on the plate there. Um, this thing has this little handle here, so you know you can handle. Show that right there. So that way you can um, not have to touch this uh, cold, you know, because that could obviously you know hurt your hands and stuff. Maybe let's go ahead and yeah, it's gonna scoop. So this stuff is probably not the firmest. Uh, the last batch was definitely firm, and let's go ahead and see, shake. Yeah, the, we're getting a little bit of that, um, what do you call it, a little slushing of the liquid that's in there. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff, right? So let me go ahead and weasel this stuff out, and uh, what doesn't end up in my mouth will pretty much go in the freezer, and then uh, we'll take an official sample right all right the fun part we get to assemble this mess so we have the tools and the technology so we're going to reach in this bad boy and i don't know give me some here it's not like hard yet it's kind of like in between soft serve in getting there so obviously you know if you're in a hurry so the recipe for this is great right we know that well I'm gonna prove it in a minute but if you have uh, you know people screaming at you you just have to have a super cold freezer to uh, get this cold in a hurry right or make it the night before or something so we uh, will get a spoon and we will dig into this all right now we're ready for the good stuff so let's get this guy out of the way. So the, this custard ice cream is not overly sweet. And one of the concerns is if you ever eat before you freeze, things can be like more sweeter than what the finished product is. In this case, the custard wasn't overly sweet to start with and the freezing of this didn't really take anything away from it. I think this is a really good flavor. Um, this is obviously like a, a French vanilla type of a, a style because we've got the egg yolks in there which add a um, depth of flavor, just more rich flavor than your standard vanilla. Um, Obviously, we have vanilla in there that gives it the flavor, and it's not over sweet. Um, what I noticed is this has a slightly different taste than a lot of store-bought ice cream that I eat, in that this might have more fat in it. Um, you may have noticed that a lot of ice creams these days are puffed with air, they're really light. All you gotta do, really, is look at the serving size which is usually a cup or eight ounces here in the u.s and then look at what it says for grams and then go to another brand and see if it's relatively the same then go to something like haagen -Dazs or even ben and jerry's and you'll see with their serving size their grams is usually about twice or close to being twice they're really dense um, they make gray ice creams all i can say <laughs> all the cheaper stuff is good but just not great um, this stuff here though, while being very light, um, 
it just has more of that creamy taste to it. It's a lot more fresher tasting. We have no preservatives at all in this. We don't have any of those mouthfeel things like gum gar or whatever. Um, it's just it's just really good. The recipe I really like. The execution isn't bad. Um, I think the iCock did a pretty good job. I think it's a small machine. I haven't compared it really to others, so I can't say it's overly small. But I will say that if you have a large family, you're going to want more of those little bowls to be ready in the freezer so you can make a big batch of custard and then after each thing, just dump it in there. You may want to throw it in the freezer. Um, to do the double batch like what I did, the second batch came out really soft. Um, the first one was soft enough and it probably does need to be in the freezer a little longer. Especially if you want to do um, ice cream cones or something. But just to eat it like this, it's great. I give this recipe a thumbs up because it's really tasty and I think it really compares good uh, to some of the better ice creams. Um, so I hope you guys give this a try and let us know what you think about it. I want to say thank you to iCock for providing us with this machine. I think this machine is relatively inexpensive, which is great for families that are on a budget that still want to make their own ice cream, but they just you know, don't have the resources to buy the more bigger names that can cost twice as much. And there's also fancier ones out there. There's ones that have got the compressors built in and they're god awful expensive. But I think the iCock did a pretty good job. Um, you just have to be um, a little careful with the clearances on it. I try to show you how it works. Um, if you've got lots of frost built up in there or ice cream in there, you're not going to get the pieces to snap in place. But also, if there wasn't that little tight clearance, then it wouldn't really scrape as well as it does. So I think it does a pretty good job. And, um, you know, I give it my two thumbs up. If you like this recipe, we hope you subscribe below, give us a like and a comment, and also visit our website at www.amylearnstocook.com. And we're on Twitter and Pinterest at Amy Learns to Cook.